we're going to talk about chapter 8. We're actually going to talk about creating an actual model, like actually writing an equation. Today. So that will give you, it'll be mostly algebra, so that should be good. Okay? Now, if you're going to create a linear model, you just need to get in the habit we're going to be checking condition. Okay? There are more than this. But we haven't talked about the extra stuff yet, so it wouldn't make any sense. So for right now, if it asks you if it's appropriate to do a regression analysis or is it appropriate to use a linear model, then go based off the things we've talked about so far. We have two quantitative variables, there's a linear relationship, and there's no outliers that affect the linear relationship. Okay? So the homework questions, probably the first question will say, is it appropriate? This is what you would talk about questions about that. All right, so just keep those in your mind. We're going to add to that, like I said, but we haven't gotten there yet. But eventually we'll be, have more than this. Okay. Now, here is the equation for your regression line. It's essentially y equals mx plus b, but it's b plus mx. All right, it's just in a different order. All right, you'll have a y-intercept and you have a slope and you have an x and y variable, okay? Um, the reason it's written this way, it really doesn't matter for AP statistics, but in advanced statistics classes, you add in other variables, and so there's, you add on to the end, so the intercept is always at the beginning, because that way you can add on variables extra at the end, so you always have y-intercept right at the start. It does, again, won't matter so much in this class, but that's how they're normally written. So b sub 0 is the y-intercept, and b sub 1 is the slope. And you have two equations for the slope and the y-intercept that if you want to know how to do them, I believe on page 175, there is a whole math box that takes you through where they got those from. No one's going to ever ask you to prove that, though, so I'm not going to take the time to talk about it in class today. But if you look at page 175, you'll see where they all come from, and they weren't just made up one day. Now, here's some good news. Remember how I gave you guys that AP formula sheet at the beginning of the year? And we really haven't used it yet? Right. We're going to start using it. I know, it's very exciting. So on the first page, I realized that on yours, like on the actual AP exam, there's three pages, like one, two, three. To save space, I put two pages next to each other on the front page of yours. All right. So on that first, on the left-hand side of that first page, the equation for the line and the order it should be in is right there. It's the fourth thing down. Okay. Then the y-intercept equation is two, of beneath, two beneath that. And then the slope equation is beneath that. So, of course, it would be too easy for them to put it all together on the formula sheet, but it's all there. Okay. We will never use this complicated slope formula, so you don't have to worry about it. Look, here's a really complicated formula for how to find um, R, which we talked about how we're going to do it in the calculator. So some of these things you don't even need. Like this is the formula for standard deviation, which you're going to use your calculator for. This is the formula for an average, which you already know how to find. So here's the first three things we actually need on this formula sheet. Okay. So you have those, you don't have to memorize them. I will give you a laminated copy of the formula sheet on testing quizzes in here. Okay? Cool. Questions about where to find those? Okay. All right, so if you're looking at the slope formula, we have r times s sub y and s sub x. What is r? The correlation coefficient. What is s? What's S? It hasn't changed. Standard deviation. Okay. So they're going to give you the standard deviation of each variable. If you're looking at the intercept equation, what is any variable to bar over it? What does that mean? Like y bar, x bar, what does that mean? The mean of those variables. So the average y and the average x. Okay. So if you notice, the slope is in the intercept equation, so you will have to find slope first and then go back and find the intercept. Okay? Any questions, though, about these three formulas, about what anything stands for, what anything means, anything like that? 
We good? Okay. We're actually going to use these in a little bit, not on the next screen, but we're going to use them in a second. Now, here is an example of a regression model. Note that we do not use X and Y in our model. We use the actual words of the variable. All right? It makes it very self-explanatory when you're reading it. You know exactly what is happening. All right? So instead of having Y hat and having X and having like, well, what are we talking about? You can see it plain as day. We know from looking at this equation, we're going to be predicting price because it has a hat on it. We're predicting price from size. Okay? That is the standard way to do it in statistics. So I will not accept models that have X and Y in them. They need to have the actual variable name. Okay? It makes more sense that way. All right? Questions about that? All right. Well, once you have a model, they're going to ask you, it's going to happen. I'm going to ask you, the book's going to ask you, AP test is going to ask you, to interpret the slope and interpret the y-intercept. All right? I'm going to give you two sentences that you need to know. So that way, you do not, if you deviate from them and start trying to get all fancy, you'll probably miss it. But if you just say what I'm telling you to say, then you'll always get it right. Okay? So I'm going to give you some, I guess you could call them templates real fast, and then we'll go back and answer these questions. If you're going to interpret the slope, You would say for every one unit of x, if it's in parentheses, it's something that's going to be replaced. We're going to put it in context, okay? So for one whatever x is, the predicted whatever y is, Increases or decreases? How are we going to know if it increases or decreases? If we're looking at slope, how do we know if something increases or decreases? Negative or positive. So if it's a positive slope, it increases. If it's a negative slope, it decreases. So for every one unit of x, the predicted y increases or decreases. by whatever the slope is in units of y. It'll make sense when we do one in a second. But pretty much you're just saying for every 1x, the predicted y increases or decreases by this amount. All right? Giving this to you helps you kind of write that in context because they're going to ask you over and over and over again. Okay? That's what slope is, though. If you think about it, we're talking about rise over run, right? So as x increases by 1, then the slope increases by whatever it is. Right, or decreases. So that's what makes perfect sense. But we're writing it out into context, and sometimes that gets tricky. If you're going to interpret the y-intercept, what is a y-intercept? Just in general, in algebra, what's a y-intercept? All right, where a function crosses the y-axis. And so where a function crosses the y-axis, what does x equal? Zero. So we'll say for zero whatever x is, right, for 0x, the predicted y is whatever the y-intercept is in units. Now, y-intercepts don't always make sense for models. All right, the slope should make sense. But the y-intercept doesn't always have to make sense. Because if we think about scatter plots, a lot of the time the um, axes don't match up, right? We have like thousands and thousands. We don't have zero, zero in our scatter plot, okay? So if you don't have zero, zero in your scatter plot, then you can't expect for the y to actually necessarily make sense all the time. And you'll see that in this example we're going to do. It won't make sense, and that's okay. okay. Everyone feel comfortable, though, with what I've been talking about? With units. You want to give the y-intercept with units. We're always doing it in context, so you always want to include units. All right. So here is the linear model, and it's for the just checking you did yesterday in the reading guide. Same stuff about house price and house size. Please take note of the units. The house price is in thousands of dollars, and the house size is in thousands of square feet. 
All right. That shouldn't be tricky, but they're trying to be a little bit tricky. So on the first one, it says, what does the slope mean? That's what we're going to use. That means interpret the slope. We're going to talk about what the slope is. So we would say, I'm just going to fill this in if that's okay. What is y and what is x in our model? Y is price, size is x, right? Okay, so for every one, whatever size is, the so size is in thousands of square feet, right? So I could say, and it, it would be weird to say for every one thousands of square feet. So I'm going to say for every 1,000 square feet. Does that make sense so far? The predicted, y is price, the predicted price, this is an increase or decrease? Slow positive or negative? Positive, so increases by, now, normally we're, it's not so complicated. In this case, if we filled in our template, we would say increases by 94.454 thousands of dollars, but that's silly, right? So you can just say by $94,454. I mean, you said the other way just sounds stupid, right? 94.454 thousands of dollars. So most of them are in weird units, and you can just say increases by 94.454 meters or whatever it actually happens to be. Questions about that sentence? And that's what you should be saying every time you interpret slope. Again, okay, most of the time x is 1. It's actually 1 something. For every 1 meter, for every 1 liter, for, this one just happens to be in thousands of square feet. And it would be weird to say every 1,000 of square feet. So. Questions about that? When it asks about the units of the slope, do you think about slope? It's rise over run, right? Y over x. Do you think about y over 1x? So we would say $1,000 per 1,000 square feet. That's all it's asking for. What are the units? On 6, your house is 2,000 square feet bigger than your neighbor's house. How much more do you expect it to be worth? So how can I use my model to figure this out? Now, so 2,000 square feet bigger, so how do you, do you think the price compares? How are we going to figure that out? Just plug 2,000 into the model, all right? So we'll put 2,000 in for size. Um, 94, 454. Now, be careful, because size is in thousands of square feet, right? So I can't type in 2,000 to type in 2. Does that make sense? So we're in thousands of square feet. And then minus 3.117. So 185.791, which would be in thousands of dollars. So 185,791. So I would expect my house to cost that much more than my neighbor's house. Does that make sense? Okay. And the last one. Is the y-intercept of negative 3.117 meaningful? Explain. So we're interpreting the y-intercept and then talking about if it actually makes sense in this context. So we go down here. For zero square feet, the predicted price is negative $3,117. That's the correct sentence. Does that mean anything? Is it actually meaningful in this context? Does it actually make sense? No, and that's fine. You can't not own a house and be given $3,117. So that would have been awesome, but that doesn't happen. So questions about any of those? So on the homework, have a chance to practice that. OK, we good with that? Then the only other thing we're going to do today, we're actually going to go through actually writing a model, because we've done that, even though you have the formulas. We're just going to do one together, and then I'll give you the assignment. Okay? All right. So, in Chapter 7 in Exercise 31, we learned that the Office of Federal Housing Enterprise Oversight collects data on various aspects of housing costs around the United States. Here's a scatter plot by state of the Housing Cost Index, HCI, versus the median family income, MFI, for the 50 states. 
The correlation is 0.65. The mean HCI is 338.2 with a standard deviation of 116.55. The mean MFI is 46,234 with a standard deviation of 7,072.47. Probably going to need all those numbers while I highlighted them. All right, so in part A, is a regression analysis appropriate? Explain. If you're going to write about if it's appropriate, what are we going to look at? Right, it has to be linear. Does it have a linear association? Yeah. Seems to, right? It might be weak, but it has a linear association. So we have linear association. What are the other two things we're supposed to look at? Uh, outliers that affect that form or the string. I mean, it's pretty. It's not very strong to begin with, right? So we're not going to say there's any outliers. And then do we have two quantitative variables? We have median family income and thousands of dollars in the housing cost index. Okay. So we would talk about those three things. We would say all of that. And then we, since we said it was all good, then we say it's appropriate. We go with A. Yeah? Okay. What is the equation that predicts housing cost index from median family income? So we're predicting HCI. That means I know right now that it's going to be HCI hack. That's what I'm predicting, HCI from median family income. So here is where I'm going to have to go through those formulas and figure some things out. All right? So we need to find the slope first. It's R times the standard deviation of Y over the standard deviation of X. Okay? So, again, if you're thinking about this, HCI is Y. So that means median family income is X. So we have R, which was 0.0 or 0.65. Standard deviation of HCI is 116.55 divided by 46,234. Everyone know where those numbers came from? Mm -hmm. If you have the data set. And if you have the data set, you don't have to go through this whole rigmarole either. So multiply right, 0.65, 116.55, divide by 46, oh, I divided by the wrong thing. Way to go, guys. You didn't catch me. Standard deviation. I was like, that's not right. Make sure you're dividing by the right numbers. Okay, that's better. 0.011. Yes, now that we know where those numbers came from. I used the wrong one. All right. Once we have the slope, we can find the y-intercept. So, so b sub 0 equals, I don't want to get this wrong, y bar minus slope times x bar. Okay, so the mean HCI is 338.2, slope is 0 0.011, and the median family income is 46,234. Negative 157.04. All right, we agree with where we got those numbers. Let me just write the equation. So HCI hat equals negative 157.04 plus 0 0.011 times median family income. Everyone go with that. It's pretty much just plugging in numbers, right? Don't plug them in wrong like I did the first time. All right, on C, 
For a state with MFI of $44,993, what would be the predicted HCI? What would we do for that? Right. We would plug this in to the equation and figure out what HCI hat is. I'm not going to do that right now. I think you could do that. Would you agree? Okay. On D, Washington, D.C. Has an, has an MFI of $44,993 and an HCI of 548.02. How far off is this prediction in B from the actual HCI? So you found a predicted value. You now have the actual value, so now you can find the residual. Right? We would just take 548.02 actual minus whatever we got predicted in part C. Does that make sense? Okay. Last night for your residuals, because I know one of the questions asks, if you have a positive residual, remember residual is actual minus predicted. If you have a positive residual, then which number was larger, actual or predicted? Actual, right? The minus predicted will give you positive. So that just means that your um, line, your model, just undercut what was actually happening. That's okay. It was less than, and that's okay. You can put that into context. If it was negative, that means your predicted value was larger, right? So that means your actual point fell under the line. It's not a big deal. That's all that means. All right. Now, E and F, talk about what you supposed to read last night. Okay? When you read through how to write the equations, first it went through by doing it with correlation and z-scores. And it said you could have z-hat of y equals r times z sub x. All right? And if everything was standardized, you don't have to go through all this craziness, all these numbers, and you just had the z-score of y predicted equals the correlation times the z-score of x. All right? So, for E, if we standardize both variables, what would be the regression equation that predicts standardized HCI from standardized MFI? Well, that would just be Z hat HCI equal to 0.65 Z MFI. Right? You're just using the correlation. You don't have to do everything else. F says the exact opposite. If we standardize both variables, what would be the regression equation that predicts standardized MFI from standardized HCI? If everything's standardized, it doesn't matter what order it's in, right? So we could just flip that around. Questions about that? All right. Then I have one more thing to say to you before I give the assignment. In the event that they ask you another question, that says, so in our original question, it says, what is the equation that predicts HCI from MFI? Right? That's what it said. We're predicting HCI from MFI. If they then later added a part G and said, what is the equation that predicts MFI from HCI? So they flip the variables on you. Right? If they're standardized, it doesn't matter. You flip the variables. If they're not standardized, one, you can't just flip the variables. Two, you cannot solve the original equation for the other variable. That's a very tempting thing to do because it's an algebraic thing to do. All right? So you could not take this equation and solve for MFI. So switch it around. It doesn't work. It's tempting, but it doesn't work. So if you're going to switch the variables, you just start from scratch with your equation. You have to go back and do the B sub 1 formula again, but switching Y and X. And then the slope formula again, the intercept formula again, because the slope would be different. And their means would be swapped. Okay? You cannot try to be tricky and just solve the equation for the other variable. Okay? Don't do that. Any questions you have for me right now? Then here is the assignment. <laughs>